Today in the workshop, we'll learn how to use a real-time clock with the Arduino. We'll see how the DS1307 real-time clock works and how to use it with interrupts. We'll also build a clock with a temperature and humidity display. So get ready to have a great time and welcome to the workshop. Hello and welcome to the workshop. Today we're going to talk about a very timely subject and that being real-time clocks. Now what exactly is a real-time clock? Is there such a thing as a fake time clock or an unreal time clock? Well no, a real-time clock just allows you to answer one of the most basic questions that I'm sure you ask once or twice every day. What time is it right now? Now the Arduino, all Arduinos, are wonderful devices. We use them for a number of different projects. They're very capable. They've got digital I.O. pins. They've got analog to digital converters. They can communicate with I2C, SPI, serial communications. But one thing they cannot do is answer that question. What time is it? The Arduino does have some time-related functions. There is the delay function. There's also the millis function that will tell you the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since the Arduino was last rebooted or powered up. But there is no function to actually give you the time of day, and for that you need to add an additional component, a real-time clock. Now I'm going to be using a real-time clock that's based on the DS1307 real-time clock chip, and it's a very popular module. It's called the Tiny RTC module. So what we're going to do today is hook a Tiny RTC module up to our Arduino. It hooks via the I2C bus. We'll run some sketches to set the time on the module and to read the time in the module, and then we'll look at a more advanced use of the module using interrupts. So let's get started and learn a little bit about the tiny RTC module and the DS1307 real-time clock chip. Let's take a look at the DS1307 real-time clock chip. The DS1307 counts time, date, day of week, month, and year with an accuracy down to one second. It can be used in a 12 or a 24 hour format. The device has leap year compensation to the year 2100, which incidentally is not a leap year. The DS1307 uses an I2C two-wire serial interface. In addition to its clock functions, it also has a programmable square wave output. The device has battery backup with automatic power failure detect and switchover. In battery backup mode, the device consumes less than 500 nanoamperes for very long battery life. Now here are the pinouts of the tiny RTC, one of the most popular DS1307 based modules. You will note that the pinouts are repeated on both sides of the device. First we have the device select, which allows you to enable or disable the device. Next is the I2C serial clock, followed by the I2C serial data. The VCC connection is for the power supply. And of course there is a ground connection. There is also a square wave output and an output from the backup battery. So now, let's start using the DS1307. So here's the tiny RTC real-time clock module. As you can see, I've soldered some header pins to one side of the module, and there's a connector on this side as well. If you're making the I2C connections, it doesn't matter which side you connect to. They actually provide two sets of connections, which is pretty common for I2C modules, because sometimes you want to daisy chain these things. Now, if you flip the module over, you'll notice that there's a coin cell and a holder over here. If if you order your module from an overseas source, there's a good chance it'll arrive without the battery in it and you'll have to install it itself and that's just because of regulations involving shipping lithium batteries. But otherwise, it's a very simple little module and as you're about to see, it's quite an easy module to use. 
So now that we've looked at the tiny RTC module, it's time to put it to use. The module uses the I2C bus, so hook up to the Arduino is very simple. Once we hook it up, we'll download a couple of libraries, run a few test sketches, and see how we can set the time and read the time on the module. So let's get going and hook it up to our Arduino. Now here's how we're going to hook up our real-time clock module. You will need an Arduino Uno and a tiny RTC real-time clock module. We'll begin by connecting VCC on the module to the Arduino's 5 volt output. Next, we'll connect the ground on the module to the Arduino ground. The SDA connection on the module will connect to Arduino analog pin A4. Some Arduinos also have an SDA connection, and you can use that instead. Finally, the SCL connection on the module will connect to Arduino analog pin A5, or the SCL connection if your Arduino has one. And this completes the hookup of the tiny RTC module. There are a number of different libraries you could use with the real-time clock. Today I'm going to be using two libraries that were contributed to the community by Paul Stoffergen, who has contributed a lot of code to the Arduino community. I'm using his DS1307 RTC library, and it is also dependent upon the Time library. You can find details for downloading and installing those libraries into your Arduino IDE on the article accompanying this video on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. Once you have the libraries installed, you can go and take a look at a couple of the example sketches. You'll go into Examples and scroll down to DS1307 RTC where you'll find Read Test and Set Time. Now the set time sketch will set the time of your real-time clock to match the time on the computer running your Arduino IDE. So you'll want to ensure that your computer has the correct time. Since most computers synchronize to a network time protocol server, that probably isn't a problem. The sketch will start off by including the wire library, which is the built-in Arduino library for dealing with I2C. We'll also include the two libraries we just downloaded. Now, the sketch has a number of different elements in it, some of which you may not be familiar with. One of the ones over here is TM Elements. TM Elements is a data structure and allows convenient access to the elements of time that we're all familiar with, like minutes, seconds, hours, days, etc. Without using a data structure, the time you are going to get back is going to be in the number of seconds that have elapsed since the beginning of Unix time, which is January 1st, 1970. It is far easier to use a data structure for that. We define ours as being TM. Now, most of the activity in this sketch occurs down at the bottom here in these two functions, the get time and get date functions. And what these functions do is they take the time and date that are in your Arduino compiler. So in other words, the time and date on your system, and these are returned. And so get time and date are called in the setup, and these are written to the real time clock using this function here. And then after that, we open the serial monitor and read back that time and that date. Now, this code actually has no function whatsoever in the loop. And so this code will now program your real-time clock to match the time on your computer. So by running this and opening the serial monitor, we should see that the time correlates as long as it's capable of writing to the DS1307 chip. So let's take a look at that right now. Now writing the set time sketch really couldn't be simpler. Observe the time on your computer and then upload the sketch to your Arduino. Once it's uploaded, simply open your serial monitor. And you should observe that the time that the real time clock has now correlates to the time you have on your computer. And that's all there is to it. 
Now the other example sketch that's included with the DS1307 RTC library is the read test. And this shows you how you can read the time from a clock module that has already been set. And as you'll see, it's actually pretty simple. Now we will start off by including the same three libraries, the wire library for I2C, the time library, and the DS1307 RTC library. Then we go into the setup when we set up our serial monitor at 9600 baud and just print uh, DS1307 RTC read test. Now before we go into the loop, let's take a look at a function that we have down at the bottom because this function is used within the loop. The function is called print two digits and all this function's purpose is is to format the time correctly because when the digit is below 10, such as 9 seconds, 8 seconds, or 9 minutes, or 8 minutes, <clears throat> we'd like to proceed it with a zero. And that's what this function does. It sees if the number is between 0 and 10, including 0. And if it is, it writes an additional 0 to it, so it formats it nicely. In the loop, we start off again with the TM elements, the data structure that we spoke of earlier, and we define that as TM so that we can get our basic unit of hours, minutes, and seconds. And then it is just a matter of reading the real-time clock and printing out those values. So TM hours, and then a colon, the minutes, a colon, a second, and then we'll do a print that says day, month, year equals, and then print the day with a slash, a month with a slash, and a year. Notice how we use the print two digit functions on the hours and the minutes to format those correctly. So that's really all that there is to it to read a DS1307 real time clock once it has been programmed with the time. So let's run this and see what it looks like. Running the read test sketch is just as simple as a set time sketch. Once you've uploaded the sketch to your Arduino, just open up your serial monitor. And if everything is working, you can see the clock that matches the clock on your computer, giving the correct time and date. And again, that's really all there is to it. We've now proven that our DS1307 real-time clock is functioning correctly and has the correct time and date. So now we've seen the fundamentals of using the tiny RTC clock with the Arduino. And if all we wanted to do was display the current time in our Arduino, in other words, build a clock, we really don't need much more. We could use a liquid crystal or an OLED or an LED display instead of the serial monitor and build ourselves a clock. Although chances are that isn't what you want to do since digital clocks aren't exactly expensive and they're pretty readily available. Now, another thing you can do with the tiny RTC module is generate a square wave. You may have noticed that there's a square wave output on one of the connectors on one side of the module. Now, that square wave can be generated at a number of preset frequencies, and I will show you how you can do that now. Now, the preset frequency I'm going to be using is 1 hertz, so in other words, you'll get one pulse every second. Now, you could do a number of different things with with this. You could eliminate the Arduino entirely and use that one hertz pulse to pulse a stepper motor and make yourself an analog clock if you wished. But another thing you could do with that pulse is use it to cause an interrupt. Now we've discussed interrupts previously. Interrupts essentially are exactly what they sound like. An interrupt comes along and the processor stops everything it's doing and services the interrupt and then goes back to doing what it was doing before the interrupt came. There are a couple of pins on the Arduino that are set for hardware interrupts and those pins differ from the model of Arduino that you have. So on different Arduinos you'll have different uh, pins doing interrupts. On the Arduino Uno, pins 2 and 3 can be used for interrupts, and those are interrupt 0 and interrupt 1 respectively. So I'm going to show you some code right now that can make use of one of those interrupts. We're going to connect the square wave output from the real time clock module to one of those interrupt pins and run a bit of code. We'll initially just flash an LED 
with it, but then after that I will show you something practical you can do using interrupts with the real-time clock. So let's get going and take a look at that now. To perform our experiment with the square wave interrupt, we'll start with the same wiring that we already have. You can add an LED and a dropping resistor if you wish, although these are optional. You can also just elect to use the onboard LED on the Arduino. If you do decide to use these, I used a 220 ohm resistor, but any value from 150 to 470 ohms would suffice. We need to make one additional connection from the real time clock module to the Arduino. So connect the SQ or square wave output to pin 2 of the Arduino's digital I.O. If you're using the external LED, connect one side of the resistor to pin 13 and the other side to the anode of the LED. Connect the cathode of the LED to the ground in the Arduino. And this completes the wiring. Now here's the Arduino DS1307 set square wave interrupt sketch provided by Robert Ulbrich and it's a really nice sketch. What I like about it is that it illustrates how to use the I2C library very well and it doesn't require any additional libraries. So you'll start by including the wire library which is the library for communicating with the I2C bus that's included in your Arduino IDE. Next, we'll make a couple of definitions. DS1307 control ID with a value of hexadecimal 68 is the value of the I2C address for the DS1307. So that's built in and hard coded into the chip. We also define a constant called LED pin. Now this is the pin that we are connecting an LED to. Now we could use the number 13 over here from an Arduino Uno, but it's actually better to use this statement, LED built-in, because that will work on every Arduino board. Next we have a function called set SQW and this actually sets up the frequency of the square wave and so we're going to pass it a value that you'll see a little later and we start off on the wire library. We begin our transmission so we transmit over to the control ID over here so we know we're talking to the DS1307. Then we'll write a value of 7 which is called a preamble. And then after that, we write the actual value that we've passed over here, which will set up the square wave frequency. And then after that, we end the transmission. So this is an excellent illustration of how you communicate with devices on the I2C bus. Next, we have handle int. This is our interrupt handler, because what we are doing is we are creating an interrupt. So every time the interrupt has been detected, we'll call this interrupt handler. And this interrupt handler simply flashes the LED. Now, if we go into setup, we'll see how we set everything up. And it's quite simple, really. We'll set up the serial monitor and we'll print a few things over to the serial monitor. We define the LED pin as being an output. Next, we attach our interrupt. Now we're going for interrupt zero, which is data pin two on the Arduino Uno. And then we will call our interrupt handler, which we called handle int, that was this up over here. And we do this on the falling edge of the interrupt. So every time we see this interrupt on data pin two, which is interrupt zero, we'll call handle int, which should flash the LED. And over here, finally, we set the actual square wave frequency on the DS1307 by using the set SQW function we discussed earlier, and we pass it this value, which will set the frequency to 1 hertz. This sketch has nothing in the loop because everything is accomplished here in the setup. So let's take a look at this working now. Now here's our square wave interrupt sketch. It's a very simple uh, demonstration as you can see. On the screen we can see that uh, it has set the square wave to 1 hertz and it's attached itself to the interrupt on pin D2 which is this blue wire over here coming from my real time clock. And I've got an external LED that is blinking on and off. And you can also see, if you look carefully, that the onboard LED is doing the same. 
Visually, it looks pretty well just like a fancy version of the Blink sketch, except, of course, this one is working by using an interrupt every time it sees a pulse on pin D2. So it's a very simple but effective demonstration on how to use that uh, square wave signal as an interrupt for the Arduino. So our interrupt-driven sketch seems to work pretty well. It flashes an LED every time it receives an interrupt. But as far as being a practical sketch, it really isn't. I mean, there are other ways of flashing an LED. And if you really wanted to, you could connect the LED directly to the real-time clock module square wave output and just flash it that way and eliminate the Arduino altogether. So let's take a look at a more practical use for using interrupts. Now what I'm going to do is use a temperature and humidity sensor. I'm going to use an AM2320, which is an I2C temperature and humidity sensor, but the same thing would apply to a DHT22 or DHT11, which are more common temperature and humidity sensors. One of the things with these sensors is they need about two seconds between readings to stabilize. And so the way that we ran our older sketches where we displayed the time isn't going to work. In those sketches, we'd go out to the clock module, read the time, displayed it on the serial monitor, and then we delayed for one second, and then went back and did the whole thing over again. And of course, the time would have incremented by one second when we read it next. But if we need to wait at least two seconds to stabilize our module, that isn't going to work. By the time we go back and read the clock, two or maybe even three seconds will have elapsed, and the clock display is going to be a bit erratic. And so interrupts are a way of resolving this issue. Now what I've done with this sketch is I'm going to read an interrupt every second, and I'm going to increment a counter. And when the counter is incremented, I'm going to go out and read the time and display it. So every second I'll display the time, and I'll also display the humidity reading and the temperature reading which I have stored in a variable. I'm only going to update the temperature and humidity sensor every 10 seconds, however, because I figure that in normal situations the temperature and humidity in your room or your environment isn't going to fluctuate that much within 10 seconds. Now, if you want to, you can rewrite the sketch, just change the number and set it down to two or three seconds if you want to read it more regularly. But I thought this was an easy and nice compromise. So let's take a look at that sketch right now. Now we're going to start off with the same circuit we did with the real-time clock and the square wave driving the interrupt on pin 2. I've removed the LED and the resistor from the circuit. We're going to add the AM2320 temperature and humidity sensor into our circuit. The pin on the far left side of the AM2320 is the VCC pin, and this will be connected to the 5 volt line. The second from the right pin on the AM2320 is the ground pin, and this of course will be connected to the Arduino ground. The second pin on the left on the AM2320 is the SDA pin, so connect this to the analog A4 line or the SDA input if your Arduino has one. And finally, the remaining pin is the clock line, the SCL pin. So now that you've hooked this up, Let's take a look at the sketch that'll get the AM2320 working with our real-time clock. Now here's the sketch we're going to use to add the AM2320 temperature and humidity sensor to our real-time clock circuit. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll probably notice that this sketch is essentially an amalgamation of the sketches that we've looked at earlier. So we're going to start off by including the required library. So we have the wire library, the two libraries for the real-time clock, and an additional library, the Adafruit AM2320 library. Now, if you have not installed this library before, you can find the AM2320 library in your library manager. However, you'll also need to install the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library, as this is used with many Adafruit sensors. It's not called from the sketch, but the Adafruit AM2320 library is dependent upon it. 
Next, we'll start off by doing the same thing we did before. We'll define the address for the I2C sensor because we're going to need to address it and set our square wave to 1 hertz as we did earlier. We'll also define an object for the AM2320. Now I've got a couple of variables in here that I'm calling ticks and the old tick value. This is basically a value that's going to increment every time the square wave causes an interrupt in the Arduino, and we're going to use this as a counter. I've also got a couple of variables for the humidity and the temperature over here. Now we go into the setup, we'll set up our serial monitor, and as before, we're going to attach the interrupt to the pin D2, which is interrupt zero over here. So every time we get a falling pulse over here, it'll call the handle int function, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Once again, we're going to set the square wave at 1 hertz, so we call the set sqw function that you saw earlier and pass it this value to set the square wave to 1 hertz. We'll initialize the temperature and humidity sensor, then delay for two seconds and read the temperature and humidity sensor. Remember, we need to do the delay in order to allow the sensor to stabilize before we take a reading. Now let's go on into the loop. There's not that much in the loop because it's done mostly in the functions. First of all, we wanted to read the temperature and humidity sensor every 10 seconds. Now if you wish, you could read it more frequently, although I wouldn't go below 3 seconds. But at any rate, we count the number of ticks, and when the ticks reach 10, we'll read the humidity and the temperature and assign it to the two variables, and then reset the tick value to 0. Now, this is where we update the serial monitor. Now, if the ticks are not equal to the old tick value, it means the tick value has incremented. Remember, this could be executed several times within a second, and we don't want to repeat the reading of the seconds. So we wait until the tick is incremented to a value higher than its previous one. If the value has incremented, then we'll reset the tick value to old tick value so that we can run this the next time. And then we call a function I'll show you in a second called print current time and pass it the humidity and the temperature. Now here's our interrupt handler. Now the interrupt handler simply does one thing. It increments the values of the ticks by one and that's it. It's always important to do as little as you can within an interrupt handler because you're stopping processing of everything else. Okay, the set SQW we've seen before, this just sets the frequency of the square wave, and we looked at that earlier. We've also seen this before, the print two digits function, which simply takes one digit number and places a zero in front of them in order to make them two digit numbers. And now the print current time function, which prints to the serial monitor. As we saw earlier, we're going to pass it both the temperature and humidity value. We start off again with our data structure, and then we go through when we did what we did before. We're going to print the hours, minutes, and seconds. I've formatted this to just have the hours, minutes, and seconds, followed by the date in universal date format. And then after that, we'll print the humidity and the temperature. We'll do a new line and that's it for the function. So once again this is really an amalgamation of things that we have seen before. So now let's load this up to our Arduino and take a look at it and see how it works. So here's our real time clock with our temperature and humidity module and I've got the temperature and humidity module right here in a breadboard and the real time clock is over here and of course here's my Arduino. Now if you take a look at the screen you can see that we are indeed reading the time and the temperature. Remember however that we update the temperature on every tenth tick or every 10 seconds. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna just raise the temperature a bit. I'm gonna throw a heat gun. Now notice the temperature has not yet gone up. It's done every 10 seconds. But we should eventually see that rise. And there we go. Now we're at 28.5 degrees Celsius. 
and we'll wait another 10 seconds. Look at that. Now we're at 36 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, the temperature and humidity module is only being read every 10 seconds. Now, in normal circumstances, of course, the temperature shouldn't rise that drastically within a 10 second period. But if this is a problem for you, you could also reduce that time down to about three seconds or maybe even two seconds to have a more responsive meter. But otherwise, our circuit seems to work just perfectly. All right, well, that about wraps it up for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you're now thinking of making time-aware Arduino projects. Now, as always, you will find a detailed article accompanying this video on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. You will find the link to that right below the video. While you are on the website, please consider joining my newsletter. This is not a sales letter. It's my way of keeping you informed about what is going on in the workshop and also of soliciting your opinions so that I can find out what other subjects you would like me to cover in these videos and articles. Also, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do that. There's a lot going on in the workshop. We'll be having videos every Saturday and robot videos every Thursday. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Until the next time we meet, please take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you very soon again here in the workshop. Goodbye for now.